So I think way back uh, when I was trying to ask what we wanted to talk about, you suggested we start talking perhaps about tankies. Oh, tankies, yes. Um, honestly, uh, I, the my suggestion about talking about tankies was mostly having to do with the, uh, you know, I, I knew when I started my YouTube, I needed at least some core social media to go alongside with it. So I chose pretty much Reddit and Twitter. And uh, with Twitter, I just kind of followed the standard like YouTube, Twitch politics people, mm -hmm. um, which included you. And I saw that recently you had been going through some just uh, kind of an anti-tanky uh, arc on your on your Twitter. I, I think this culminated in, uh, what's that? It's a uh, bad empanada tried to... I think tried to dox you or he was he, he, he threatened it I have no up. idea if he'll do it he does a lot of posturing so who knows yeah it just it though just in all fairness uh, uh, to bizarre. defend the honor of bad empanada he's not actually a tanky he is like genuinely like a I, I just say this because he's not like a Xinjiang genocide denier he gets shit on all the time by people who will like always defend um, these states like he, he talks also about like the evils of like the shining path and so on um, so I, I guess I just mean to say like he in particular is just like a standard communist who is very, very, very angry on Twitter. Not tanky. <laughs> well, I, that's fair. That's fair. I guess th this got jump jumbled in with um, really just an amount of genocide denial I, I didn't expect to see amongst my generation, <laughs> at least. Like, um, it just seems crazy the amount of uh, people who are on Twitter and and. Um, uh, I guess I don't see this on YouTube as much because there's not as much sort of reactionary type content with it. Um, or maybe that type of content takes a little longer to make versus just, you know, sending out tweets and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just crazy. I think I saw I think I saw a tweet from Hakeem, for instance, that said something along the lines of like, um, well, the uh, the week, you know, the ch isn't it better to send people who are predisposed to radicalization to education camps rather than like bombing them like the U.S. government does? That was <laughs> something like that was like the spirit of Hakeem's tweet. And it's like, man, I just like, what? Like I, in my head, the, where my head went was like, what if, um, like, what if, what if Donald Trump said black people were predisposed to crime? And so we're sending them to mandatory education facilities. Like what, like would the reaction from this community really be that that was a reasonable policy chance stance? I mean, probably not. Right. And no, I don't know. I, yeah, of course not. <laughs> and so, no, it just, it seems so, I don't even do this kind of content, but I, I was like, man, am I, uh, this exact moment and when people were shitting on The Last of Us 2, I'm like, am I going to need to make like an hour long video about the ridiculous, uh, you know, positions of these people, but uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sleeping on it each night and every day I wake up and uh, it's, it's not worth it, but maybe it's, maybe I mean, it's it also just not worth it day. to be clear. Uh, so like I, I linked, th this was something that just reminded me of Hakeem way back in August 2020. They were they were still talking about the Uyghurs back then. Um, the Uyghurs? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I'll never know how to pronounce it. I don't know. <laughs> I always screw this I don't up. think I don't think Uyghurs is, pro pro probably that's not right. Um, no. I <laughs> um, but uh, so regardless of the pronunciation, the Uyghurs... Um, uh, I'm going to continue to butcher. I apologize. Um, You're good. Uh, he had a, Hakeem had a tweet which said, uh, Bad Empanada says this like, he isn't going to completely forget about them in two months' time when the media conveniently does as well. And well done, conveniently missing the point. I'm a minority myself, dipshit. I have lived experience unlike you and your white savior bullshit. So uh, oh, even man. he was not spared from this sort of wrath. And this was all the way like a year and a half ago almost. Well, I guess the I guess the advantage of uh, getting into fights with tankies, um, it, it's they, they'll eventually just eat themselves, I guess. <laughs> so, you know, kind eventually of. you'll see uh, H Hakeem and Mel and I don't know, I, I guess any other any any of the rest of them get in into fights uh, with each other. It's like the, uh, the 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 viral video of the Democratic Socialist Conference where uh, it seems like at select points they they couldn't. They couldn't seem to make progress in the meeting because there were people who were, you know, unfortunately, this video was used as kind of like an LOL, look at the left, where, you know, people continuously kept getting triggered over uh, seemingly very minor things. The guy who said, can I please stop, stop with all the chatter? Um, I, I get, I'm, I'm susceptible to sensory overload and, you know, hey, you know, try to be respectful to that guy. But obviously the, you know. No, I, I think a lot of that just came from like <laughs> ableism and wanting to dunk on the left and so on. But I, I do get some yeah, of that can be a little frustrating. Sure. I, I think that for sure. 
I, I mean, I do think that some of that definitely happens on like the, the Twitter sort of tanky left. Um, definitely. Um, <laughs> Pinkwog said that apparently I'm not following you on Twitter, by the way, which is totally a dominance thing because I am the strong one. And he, uh, the kind of boy, wow. whatever their pronouns are, is a weak one. What pronouns do you use, by the way? So I am a, I'm a, I'm a, a, a cis male, a he, him. So you're so. a true boy, okay? Not an I, just a why, okay? You're appropriating you the just, label. Uh, did you just ass- did you assume that being a true boy requires me to be born with a penis? Because I, I don't know if uh, that's kind of fucked up of you, Aiden. Boy so gender, or with but instead of why it's an I, I'm boy gender. Exactly. There you go. I'm a, um, I am a, a a gender, I suppose. But anyway, so, yeah, tankies are fun to to contend with on on social media. Well, I was going to say on, they're, uh, they're fun in one in one way. This is what the, the other thing I wanted to say. It's just um. They're fun in one way, which is that like that in a lot of the things they say just seem like so kind of crazy out there that um, it's not too hard to debunk them, and often that their talking points are very very repeated. Um, the same way it's it's very similar to a lot of like uh, honestly like right wingers even it's the sort of like talking points that can very easily be destroyed. Um, and I'm sure that's true for most content creators, but the downside of it is that. Um, because of like stuff, there's this one campaign they did, like no um, comrades under 1K. They're, they're all connected in this like one big network. And so whenever you poke one of them, you get like the whole hive coming at you. Um, so it can be a little bit tr- like overwhelming, especially for smaller accounts. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I liken it to talking to conspiracy theorists where it seems like, I don't, there must be a, a law or some sort of psychological uh, rule that comments on this, but like, the idea that while like at the same time none of the sh- mainstream sources and the most credentialed sources on this on any given conspiratorial topic can be trusted at the same time this really really fringe like twitter dude or like the exact source you wouldn't trust like the chinese government like this is who we're going to trust on it, i i can't our count the number of times of this issue. sorry <laughs> I'm actually, I'm being the domineering, like, uh, I'm, I'm actually doing, you talked at the beginning about, like, Twitch panels being cancer. I'm doing it. I'm self-apologize. Go ahead. No, that's all. I, it's just this weird dichotomy of, like, I don't trust, like, like, the like the independent journalist with a PhD or who's, like, you know, been yeah. doing this for their whole career. Like, I don't trust that person, but, like, the Chinese official saying that the the real, like, human rights violators are like the police department of Minneapolis in the United States, like the, the mind blowing, you know, contradiction that exists here. I, I don't understand it myself, but Hey, you know, yeah. I, uh, I, I one of the, one of the things, what I was trying hole. to interrupt to say was um, like, I can't count the number of times that I have said like, Hey, here's evidence um, that like, I usually point to like the um, mass internment or something and then like I'll get an article from like the gray zone or like a a variety of basically like RT funded or RT like affiliated media sources. Um, And so it's just it's sort of incredible to me that will be like they'll say things like Adrian Zenz is like a a right winger on a path from God or XYZ is funded by the State Department while literally like retweeting like Shen Weiwa or whatever. Um, I think I saw uh, a Hakeem video on the Uyghur issue and he essentially said that um you know, the source talking about the million Uyghurs in the internment camps, uh, this is actually a very biased source. Let's look into this source's credentials. And it's like, well, wait, but okay, well, even if it's not a million, if it was 100,000, would that, I mean, are we, is it okay at that point? I just don't, under, like, it seems like this weird, like, it, it's almost like you're having an argument with somebody and like you're like you're getting destroyed, you're getting demolished, right? But then they say a word grammatically incorrectly and you're like holy shit motherfucker you're not even pronouncing that right look at you know uh let's focus all of our energy on this uh and not focus on the over you know it, it just that seems, is one of the that's kind of what i was trying to get at like it, it's very common that people yeah. cite um like for example there's ap articles which just like just show graphs basically from um china's uh, national health statistical data uh base on like uh, rates of birth of different populations and like very quickly you see Xinjiang going down. Um, and so like, yeah, you can justify that. Yeah. Um, but then people, instead of like justifying it, even they'll just do one step and they'll be like, Oh, who made that graph? Adrian Zenz. Well, I can't trust that graph because it's not possible for someone that I disagree with to produce like a true graph, um, which is just incredibly silly. So. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. Like I said, it, it is, it just, it's just really bizarre because to me, like, 
I guess you would have you would assume that people who would say that they're on the left, you know, obviously I'm one of them. I'm just, you know, I'm not a socialist, but left of center, I suppose. People left of center should be relatively pro human rights and, you know, freedom uh, and 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 you know the ability to personally express yourself um, in terms of your culture and your religion. And it seems weird that there's a section of of this group of people left of center who, you know, while at the same time saying that the way that, you know the way that America treats African-Americans, the way that um, uh, Europe treats migrants, uh, you know, that uh, the way that Israel treats Palestinians, this is all horrible. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. But the way that the Chinese are treating the Uyghur Muslims, you know, hey, it's justifiable. Like, this just seems like such a weird blind spot. And at the same time that I see all these whataboutisms about the West, I've never actually seen somebody on the West in response to that say, here's my justification for the way black people in America are treated. Here's my justification for the way that, you know, Muslims in Israel are treated. treated. In I've fairness, I think that you might, they, they might see some of that when they interact with conservative, perhaps, who are more interested in justifying, Maybe. like, the existing order. Maybe. But it's, it's very, it's just, it's very weak critique against leftists. Yeah, in particular. Um, just in response to someone in my chat, I don't just uh, disregard RT or um, the gray zone out of hand. In fact, I, like, critically supported, uh, I, like, critically... Um, used reporting from the gray zone on uh, an article about one of these like claims um, of one of these graphs. I said, the gray zone is correct to note that this organization is literally more or less a State Department asset. It is true. And so is the graph. The graph is also directly based on Chinese data. Um, and so like the State Department asset accurately graphed the data. Um, it, this is why you don't want to either, like, you don't want to just be like, hey, this is like a Russian asset or an American asset and just write them off. That's the whole point, actually, uh, in a nutshell. Right. Yeah, and I guess, uh, to be fair, I guess there are some sources where there's so much latitude to be skeptical. I, I'm sure that, like, uh, for me personally, if someone links me a Breitbart article, I'm just not sure. reading it. I just, I don't know what to say. Like, um, if someone... Uh, I, I think one of the ideas is, someone... like, the more layers of data analysis and opinion you're getting from something, the easier it is to, like, wiggle room. But when you're literally just graphing, like, hey, here's what the Chinese government said, th there's no room there. It doesn't matter, the, like, what their, their status is. So that's fair. I guess I guess even with that, there's uh, I remember seeing uh, uh, I, can't, I think it was Cecile Richards, who was the daughter of Ann Richards, uh, former governor of Texas, who later became the president of Planned Parenthood. She was testifying in front of a, a Congress. Uh, and of course, you know, all the Republicans were basically uh, berating her to a certain extent about the abortion services Planned Parenthood uh, provides. And mm -hmm. uh one of the congressmen holds up a graph that it's like the graph is like a graph of the number of abortions, I think, mm -hmm. and the number of maybe the number of Planned Parenthoods. And it's a double it's a double axis. Oh, graph. no, not a double axis graph. Oh, no. But but it doesn't. But no, but but SDL, but it doesn't have labels on either of the double axes <laughs> like. So it's actually so it's like a Prager U <laughs> double axis graph. Like why even put the axes yeah. there? Yeah. Like, just what a horrifically <laughs> bad graph to pull out. So um, was it literally like line know, one I, goes up and line two goes down? Is that it? It was very, very quite literally line one goes up and line two oh goes down. Oh, yes. um, So it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's, anyway, an the tanky phenomenon is an interesting one. I think that, um, you know, at the same time, I think we can all have a bit of solace in, in realizing that, um, the group of tankies in the world, I mean, this is this is not a group that in virtually any country, um, even China, uh, ironically mm -hmm. enough, uh, really has no political power um, to affect any sort of change. So I yeah, guess, I think I think the uh, only reason they get a lot of attention on Twitter is in part because like the, the type of people who move into it seem to be very aggressive and um, dismissive of other. Yeah, like certainly my experience has not been a positive one interacting so i think it's for me it's certainly just like a sort of reactive emotional um thing not like a calculated like i must destroy this part of the left so that my movement can succeed it's more of like yeah. these people are being assholes to me on twitter um, that seems to be the the I, I caught some some of vosh's stream with with a, a person named mel and um that was essentially his take, actually, it seemed, was that, like, I the reason I rail so hard against tankies was because I want to excise them from my movement and fuck these I, people. I don't want to I just don't think that's possible. 
<laughs> I, I don't think that Probably sort of excision not. is really yeah. possible. To be, like, basically, the problem is the only times that you can really excise people is like when it's a big person who you can cut down. And the main way you do that actually is deplatforming. It's getting them reported, getting them removed. And so, unless they're doing something that YouTube deems like unacceptable, you really don't have that power. You need to have, have like such a good takedown that their subscribers are going to leave them, which isn't happening. They're not going to do it. So there, there's actually not much point to doing too much of that. I think. Um, well, part of the reason for that also is that, like, this just this really just even within the space of online politics just isn't that large of a community. Like when you look yeah. at um, like if I had to guess, I would say Hakeem is probably the biggest amongst them. And this he is, is eighty thousand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a channel with eighty thousand subs, which is certainly nothing to gawk at, especially someone with less than five hundred subs talking now. But it's not. I mean. Vosh and Destiny combined, these are, I mean, you're talking like three quarters of a million subscribers. That's just two content creators. Then, mm -hmm. you know, look at Hassan, you know, Hassan, Hassan, himself, Hassan like, is like almost that doubled again. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, this is just not a, it's not a particularly relevant movement, but I guess I know that, you're right. I mean, when, yeah. Oh, what was it? There's, um, there's a really good website, but I'm totally forgetting the name of it. Bad Bayesian, if you're in chat, you should have the link for this. It's like called Graphing YouTube or something. It's, it's a, um, there was this one guy whose like particular field of expertise was like researching, um, like media spaces and like, like, um, kind of, one of his research questions was, I guess, like, um, is there actually a large like white nationalist contingent on YouTube? And the answer was mostly no, that it's really quite small. And the vast majority of traffic, something like 70% was driven to like classic partisan left and partisan right um, uh, outlets. Um, not sorry, not classic, just partisan left and partisan right, including like new outlets, like sort of Ben Shapiro style or Destiny style on the, on the left for partisan left um, or partisan liberal really. Um, right. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I think a lot of these people have kind of shock value or like curiosity value. Um, mm -hmm. But then a lot of it's probably the reactionaries kind of like almost like shooting themselves in the in the in the foot on like, you know, the you, you seem to give so much credence to th this type of viewpoint, you almost popularize it.